Good golly, Miss Molly. People losing jobs, trying to find jobs, trying to make some money. I'm Dennis Wisco of Wisco Weekly, and I had the chance to interview the founder and CEO of the rideshareguy.com. If you get the chance, take a look at uh, his website, his content. If you are looking to enter the gig economy as a maybe not even as a driver, but as a delivery person, you know, for one of these uh, mobile as a service providers, your your DoorDashes, your Instacarts, your Uber Eats. If you're looking to enter this gig economy, before you do so, check out the rideshareguide.com. And I want to bring to you a clip of the podcast episode that myself, Harry Campbell, and Jonah Bliss, who is the director of marketing at Comotion Miami, LA and Miami. I just wanna share with you this clip because again, before you enter the gig economy, I think it's important for you to know where the gig economy and where ride sharing is going. So have a listen to this clip. If you wanna hear the full episode, look at the the notes uh, on the description. I will post a link to hear the full episode and stay tuned for the end of this clip And I want to share with you a little bit more insight if you're looking to become an independent contractor, specifically in California. If the resolution is ride sharing has plateaued in 2020 and you had to make an argument in favor of that resolution, how would you support that argument? If ride sharing has plateaued in 2020, I think that's probably a reasonable statement. I think if you look at the history of the companies, like I mentioned, right, I started driving for Uber and Lyft in 2014, and uh, that was right around the time when they were passing what I call the grandma test, you know, where your grandma may have heard of them (laughs) or your mom, you know, someone maybe outside of the technology loop basically Mm -hmm. had heard of these companies and these services. And so I think in any natural uh, business cycle, especially in the startup economy, you have a lot of companies that are raising a ton of money and growing, you know, and then eventually they go public. So that's sort of what we saw with Uber and Lyft. And they're really shifting from more of a growth mindset to a profitability mindset where, you know, the picture that they're painting is not that we're growing quarter over quarter. It's, hey, we're actually now making money on the rides that we are doing and, you know, basic supply and demand, right? If they start charging more and making more money, the number of rides are going to go down or plateau, you know, their growth may plateau. So, I think it's pretty reasonable to expect that outcome. And what if you were to take the negative to disagree the fact that ride sharing is, well, again, the, the, yeah. the resolution is ride sharing in 2020 is plateauing. If you were to disagree with that statement, what would your argument be for that? Sure. Well, I think that if I was going to disagree with that, I would say that if you look out at the number of vehicles on the road at any given time, there's been, you know, Uber and Lyft have been in the news a lot lately because of congestion and kind of the negative impact they're having on congestion. But at this end of the day, if you look at the actual studies, their single digit percentage congestion, so maybe 6%, 8% in all of the major cities um, for the most part, as far as, you know, kind of like the total number of cars on the road or the, you know, aspect of congestion that they're causing. And so if you think about it like that, well, wow, actually over 90% of people are usually driving themselves or taking other alternatives. And so I think in that sense, one of the definitely longer term visions of Uber and Lyft are to get people out of their cars in exchange for taking things like Uber, of course, but also bikes and scooters, which they also both now have in their app, even public transit. You can now open the Uber or Lyft apps and see public transit options. Uber has a couple integrations with public transit companies where you can actually now pay for a public transit ride in the Uber app, which is kind of crazy. And a lot of people always ask me, like, why the heck would Uber want someone going into their app and not taking an Uber? But Yeah, that seems almost counterintuitive to a quote unquote you know, publicly traded company that's right. going after and, profits. And so I think one of the innovative things that the companies have been doing of late that kind of builds into this argument is that they sort of understand it might cause some short term negative effects if people on shorter rides or, you know, the one off situation here in LA where maybe taking the expo line from Santa Monica to downtown is actually a lot faster on the expo line than it is on Uber. But if that can over time get people to, let's say, ditch their cars completely and now they rely on a suite of, you know, public transit, Uber, bikes, scooters, Uber owns a lot of those legs of the stool. They're never going to own public transit, but they own a lot of the other legs of the stool. So the guy, you know, who takes Uber on the weekends to go to the bars or, you know, go out to dinner here and there might be taking 
two or three trips. And now they might double that. They might triple that, um, even if they're taking a number of other, you know, public transit type options. Take heed of Harry Campbell's advice when he shares with you his thoughts and insights on the future of the rideshare economy. If you are planning to enter this space. I can't emphasize to you enough how important it is for you to take it somewhat seriously. You don't have to take it seriously to the point where you have to look at this as perhaps, you know, a full-time job and and this is going to supply income for you for the next 5 years to help you feed your family. However, I do want you to consider the fact that as you enter the gig economy, you want to make sure that you set yourself up properly. One of the things that you can do is don't simply, and I understand that there will be some people who will just go blindly into this because they have to make money, which is fine. However, I think it is more valuable to you if you were to set up yourself as a corporation and specifically as a limited liability corporation an llc you can file to become an llc uh, through legal zoom that's the most popular and easiest way you want to set up a bank account and by filing to become an llc by setting up a bank account and then all of a sudden knowing what are the different expenses and also revenue slash income you can make off of this you are protecting yourself and you are also ensuring that as you look towards how you can live life how you can you know part of living life is understanding what your expenses are what your uh, vehicle insurance costs are what your what, what your car payment would be to to drive for these mobility as a service providers to know what your healthcare costs are You effectively also know then what your value is and you're not simply going to just defer and be completely, you know, you won't, you'll have some control over the situation when you understand how the numbers work, what your revenue is, what your income is versus what your expenses are. So be sure to look at setting yourself up as an LLC. There's many benefits you can take away from that too and writing off certain things. And again, of course, don't take this advice just from me. Consult with your accountant or whoever you trust. Um, I have been fortunate enough over the last few years to do my own taxes, so I understand a little bit better how this works. But in addition to writing off your vehicle expenses and your gas and your car maintenance, Uh, You can write off things in home. You can write off your cell phone bill. You can write off a lot of things that will help you take yourself more seriously and therefore look to ensure that you can maximize the benefits of being an independent contractor. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it was super helpful to you. I'll have more videos coming out for you that will help navigate you financially through this economic crisis. So tune in and subscribe.